Hi, my name is Arthur Romano Magalhães. I'm a PhD student at Federal Rural University of Pernambuco. My advisor is Dr. Thiago Gonçalves Sousa from Federal Rural University of Pernambuco. And my work comes with the collaboration of Claudia Codesso uh, from, from Fio Cruz in Brazil, and Sven from Aarhus University in Denmark, and Luis Escobar from Virginia Tech. And my, the title of my work is Integrating Social and Climate Dimensions in Disease Risk Assessment. And for starting, infectious diseases causes both human and economic harm all over the globe. So, for example, we have uh, vector borne diseases, which 4 billion people are at risk, so most of the world is at risk to contract them, and they have high burden and causes problems to populations, human populations, human problems, and problems for governments and socioeconomic problems as well. And researchers, they often look for uh, variables that could help then predict uh, the disease suitability or the disease transmission. And often they look for environmental variables that could help them predict or uh, identify disease uh, localities or this or mapping the disease risk. For example, variables linked to climate and variables linked to landscape, like land use. Or they look for biotic related variables like uh, hosts and vector presences or particularities among parasites. And often they look for socioeconomic variables like income, the sewer uh, access or sanitation, and population density. And one of the methodologies that's most used is the ecological niche models for, uh, for detecting disease transmission risk. It's a methodology that they often is used for space distributions modeling. Uh, for, the, for determining the distribution of uh, uh, species and, of course, it can be used for uh, determining the distribution of disease or transmission cycle or key species from the transmission. But often, when the researchers are building ecological niche models, the left out of the equation, the socioeconomic or social related variables using just the environmental or the biotic variables for their models. So, my question is, it's possible to increase model performance by including social related variables in ecological niche models? So, for doing this work, we give it occurrences of diseases from data source, which is uh, a department from Brazilian Ministry of Health and then it records occurrences of diseases at municipality level. For having access to the climatic variables, you use the word clean. For having access to the uh, socioeconomic variables, we use it variables from BGE, which is the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics that have socioeconomic variables at municipality level. And we use landscape variables from map biomass. After removing the most correlated variables, we end up with two variables from world clean, uh, a, a good vari variable of deforestation that assumes the deforestation from 2009 and 2018, and a good variable that's present percentages of houses with no toilet, that's a good proxy for human development index, and the access to sewer and sanitation. So, uh, after evaluating the database, we end up with 10 diseases that were nice to have uh, ecological niche models. Uh, they are infectious disease and they have some uh, relationship with environment. And after that, we made uh, individual ecological niche models using different algorithms and then we used, uh, we assembled them, we summed them up uh, in a simple model. So, in order to compare if socioeconomic variables really improve the models, we build two different models per disease. Uh, one model with all variables, including socioeconomic variables, and one model using environment only variables. And then we compare them using partial receiver operating characteristic or partial rock, which is a metric. Uh, 
that varies from 0 to 2 and 1 represents a rate on performance. This metric also it regenerates a p-value telling if the model is different from what you should expect from a random model. And now, just for have a quick look in the difference between sample sizes, at yellow you have 92 cases and then if you have more than 400,000 cases. And the main result is that models had a 14% improvement in performance when the models had socioeconomic variables in relation to the models that have only environmental variables. Okay? Schistosomiasis was the disease that had the greater improvement of 30% when socioeconomic variables entered the model, which is uh, the, this improvement was in better in that fine uh, with sweet, tab sweet table as sweet table area, an area with presences. So, uh, also, an interesting result in histosomiasis uh, is when you think and compare both models, uh, this high suitability area here, uh, when you add socioeconomic variables, end up with low suitability. So, uh, one might think that this model is better than this, and it really it has better capacity in, in separating presences, two presences from uh, the suitability area. But, of course, uh, they are rather advising different things. Like this region could be the high suitability for the cycle transmission and occurring or for parasite persisting, but it doesn't have the socioeconomic signature. So uh, researchers should think uh, what they want in their models, uh, and they, uh, they rather advise something different. Okay. So another interesting result is when we enter some inserted some socioeconomic variables. Some models that were statistically not significant became significant, like dengue and leptospirosis. They are diseases that are very prevalent, and you can see how, how high in suitability area was marking all over the country. And with socioeconomic variables, the models became significant and more precise. Chagas disease was also, also the, was a disease that had a very interesting result. Uh, after we added socioeconomic, social related variables, the model performs 33% better, 3% worse. Uh, so it had a lower capacity to correctly distinct presences. And this is a very good result, a uh, very interesting result. And it's it is good to discuss this uh, since some ecological niche models use socioeconomic variables that actually may, may make the performance of the models worse in the defined uh, truly presences. Some diseases had no substantial difference between model performance uh, between the socioeconomic and environmental only models. So one should decide uh, if it should keep it make sense keeping those socioeconomic variables. And remember Ockham's razor principle that simpler models should be kept over complexity. Okay. So I want to discuss and talk uh, very quickly about some limitations of this work. Uh, first of all, we use presence of models for some diseases that are high prevalent, but uh, this was okay for our model objectives, which were compare socioeconomic and uh, environmental only models. But some researchers that really are looking for uh, disease risk maps, uh, maybe they should not uh, have this uh, approach. So we could not also assess difference inside municipalities, which is a problem uh, since Brazil is a very uh, un unequal country, uh, which cities are very high in inequality. Also, ignore many disease systems particularities, like differences between vectors and parasites that manifest the disease. We are here uh, more uh, modeling uh, the disease as a phenomenon and not a species. 
So many of these biotic particularities from vectors, parasites, and where hosts were left, were practically virtually left out from the models. And in conclusion, uh, socioeconomic variables overall they improve NM disease risk mapping, and one should really regard uh, keeping the models. Uh, Imagine the differences that they can make in public health, uh, in public health policies, and in prediction. Uh, but they should be inserted into models with caution. Uh, the researchers should really think what variables are pertinent for model and uh, evaluate if those variables uh, add performance in the model, add precision, or add precision in their disease risk mapping. I want to thank everyone that made this work possible. I want to thank my lab, the Ecofon Lab in Rural University of Pernambuco. I want to thank CAPES, uh, the institution that funds PhD students uh, in Brazil. I want to thank uh, the British Ecological Society and Dr. Luiz Escobar, Dr. Claudia Codeso, and Dr. Zen Zveni for the, their collaborations and this work. And I want to thank my advisor, Tiago Gonçalves Souza. And I want to thank you. Goodbye.